Hello everyone. I am so excited to be back with you. I want to discuss with you the um, difference between, um, well, if you're considering um, going to college, um, if you're sitting down with your parents, or even if there's parents watching us, what's the difference between uh, community college versus traditional college? Well, I have been in higher ed for at least 15 years. And so let's talk about the difference, um, the community college versus traditional college. Um, and if you and your child are in this um, decision-making stage and which one is best, I think there's a lot of things to consider since I've been in the higher ed industry for a very long time. So uh, welcome to the presentation for community college versus traditional college. Okay, so here are the pros for attending a community college. We all know which is very common, which is the cost. The cost is extremely affordable, right? Um, it really helps the student, uh, to be honest with you, stay out of debt once they're done with college, right? They won't have that debt ceiling over their head. The next one, which is very common, is flexibility. They have classes that in the evening, um, they have classes. Um, sometimes they can adjust the schedule to accommodate a student. Uh, and so that's two, of one, that's two of the cons that I think that are really, really um, significant in um, attending a community co college. Some other pros are the smaller class sizes, right? You get more personalized attention. Who doesn't want more personalized attention, right? It, it really helps you focus on your work and you know that you can reach out to your professor, um, uh, you know, in a way that will really help you progress in your class. Also, transfer opportunities. Of course, you can use your two-year degree to transfer to another college. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more because I think that is important to understand as well. And then at the end of this presentation, I will give you guys my professional opinion about what I think that parents and students should consider before choosing a college, okay? Because I think it's really important. And I think I can give you some uh, clues about what you really need to think about, what is top priority, okay? Our next, um, uh, our con for community college is limited degree options. So you may not have as many as degree options as if you were have a four year college, right? Um, so you may have a limited uh, choices of, of, of a program of study, uh, you know, and then also the perception, right? You know that there are people, let's be honest, there are people that, that look at um, community colleges in a certain way, right? They don't think that they are, are as prestigious. And I'm not saying that they're not prestigious colleges, but I don't think that's something that anyone should focus on, whether it's a prestigious or not. It depends on, I think reputation matters, right? As long as a college doesn't have a bad reputation, um, I think uh, there's nothing wrong with um, considering a community college in spite of what societal uh, norms are concerning community colleges, campus life. Of course, uh, with the community college, um, you, it does lack a, a campus life, right? Uh, for students like extracurricular activities, you know, like Greek organizations, sorority organizations, those things, networking events. And they may have some networking events, uh, but it is different. That is a con when it comes to community college, you don't have the access um, like a four year college may have. And so now we're going to talk about the traditional college and the pros of that more degree options. You have a plethora of more program of studies that you can choose from when, when attending a traditional college. Campus life, of course, there are more clubs, there are more social events, there are more networking events um, at a, at a four-year college. Even your professors are big um, on, uh, you know, networking um, events, right? You can use them as as, as networking um, with them because of who they know, because a lot of times in your traditional college, you have PhDs. Um, so I would say uh, that's, that's one of the cons of campus life. Like I said, you have more social activities, networking opportunities, and plus you have more of a diverse student body, right? You have all different types of cultures there, which I think is also 
um, one of the one of one of the most best things that you can experience is experience different cultures because it helps you develop. It really does help you develop as a person. Okay, so you understand that your world is not the world, right? It's just your world. And so that's what I love about the uh, the four year college campus. You're dealing with a lot of diverse um, students. Uh, and, here, and here are some cons for the traditional um, college. Uh, the cost, of course, your debt ceiling is much higher, right? And so that's something that you have to consider. Some of the schedules are, are rigid, right? You may not have as much flexibility, but now things are changing. There's a lot of flexibility now, right? Typically, there, there was not a lot of flexibility, but now in, in some colleges, they're doing evening classes. They're doing, um, uh, they may not have Saturday classes, but some of them may do. They're doing these things now to accommodate uh, those that are working, the working class. Uh, so now, although at, when, you know, typically when traditional colleges were at the beginning, they didn't have these type of flexible schedules, but as time has gone on, we have them now. Um, a large class sizes, and you have to be okay with uh, multiple people in a class. You know, so many people in a class, right? And you don't have that small college feel. You, now you have this large feel where you have a lot of um, students, and the professor may, may not be able to give you that individualized attention like you're used to, you know, like you may get in, in a community college. So keep that in mind as well. Time commitment, right? So now things have changed. Typically, it used to uh, it used to take you about four years to get a degree. Now you can get a four-year degree in one year degree. You can get a bachelor's degree in one year. In, in one year. You can get a bachelor's degree in a year and a half. So things have changed over time. Okay, uh, so, you know, things have changed over time. So we know that uh, the typical four-year degree now has turned into um, a year or two, right? And so, which is good because time has expanded um, and allowed us to uh, grab degrees that normally would take four years. I think like a PhD would take seven years. Like, I think that's ridiculous. I think that is too long to be in school. I, I do. Um, uh, to get a PhD. I'm not saying that you should not do the research. I'm not saying, I'm just saying that it has to be a way to where someone can get a degree, a PhD or a doctoral degree less than seven years. And now they have that. They have doc doc doctoral degrees and get for in two years, three years, now four years. So if you're looking for that, make sure you look into that because there are some programs out here that do offer that. And here is my professional opinion. I, like I said earlier, I, I have been in higher ed for 15 years. I think parents and students need to consider the cost. I sincerely do. I do think that sometimes we go to these really expensive schools, prestigious schools, and the debt ceiling is so, I mean, it's so high. So when the student gets out of, when the student um, graduates, now he has this debt uh, a burden of debt that's on their shoulders that they have to now figure out, um, you know, how to repay it. I, I think, uh, and, and let's say not even the student, but let's say it's the parents. Now the parents that's maybe in their forties and fifties, right? Now you have to pay back parent loans, parent plus loans for, and you're in your forties and fifties and sixties. I do not think that is wise. I will tell you that out of my professional opinion, if you have it, great then you can do it for your kid but i do think you the cost needs to be considered first and what type of stress or what type of predicament that will put the family in and that's not only the student but also the parent and i think there are ways that we can work around it where the student can get us get a and get a degree receive a wonderful degree uh, from a prestigious college without um, without the debt ceiling. Um, also, networking is key, right? And so I think the four-year college offers such a networking um, of space that I think is I think is important uh, to network. And I also think it's important for students to stay on campus. Um, I think um, you know for students to um, uh, to stay on campus, it helps them develop as, you know, as people, right? Uh, it helps them understand 
um, how to get along with other people. I think if a child or a student uh, can experience living on campus, I think they should. I think it's really important. Um, also, um, so, and I'm saying depending on the circumstances, the reason why I'm saying depending on the circumstances is because it depends on the individual situation. And so in my professional opinion, I think people should start out sometimes at a community college where it's affordable and transfer to their dream college if possible. Um, and that way your, your debt ceiling won't be as high. Um, you will still, your degree will still be from that prestigious school or whatever college it may be. Um, but I most definitely think uh, that um, do, could, attending a community college at first and then transferring to a four-year college or university that, that the student wants to be a part of. I think that will help financially. Um, I think that's the piece where networking will come in, right? Now, if, like I said earlier, if you have the money for your kid, let them start out at a four-year college if that's what you want them to do. And no one will be in debt once the child is, you know, once the student is graduated, they won't have this high dealing set and the parent won't have this high ceiling uh, debt. But I think I think for us to let press, um, the prestige drive drive our uh, our opinion about what our um, child or even the student allowing prestige to drive your opinion about what school you attend. I think we need to be very cautious of that because at the same time, I know people with two-year degrees that make way more money than folks that have four-year degrees, even a PhD, and make just as much money. Uh, you can, we know that, we know that just about on YouTube, a lot of these people don't even have degrees and they're making millions of dollars for just creating content. So if the goal is for you to be able to take care of yourself, right? And, and if it's, if, if it's your goal to be able to, to be a blessing to humanity, you can do that financially, uh, you know, you don't necessarily have to get yourself in debt to be able to do it. Do I think education is important? I absolutely do. I have a bachelor's degree. I have a master's degree. And I started a PhD that I did not finish. So I do think it's important. I will finish my PhD. What I'm not willing to do is get in debt for it. And so I want to give you my professional opinion and just kind of give you uh, community college versus the traditional school. So you'll be able to make an informed decision when you're talking to your child. And let's say if the student is watching, please be considerate of your parents' age and the debt threshold that you are putting them in. If they have it, great. But if they can't afford it, you need to rethink your plan and come up with a different strategy or you all come together and come up with a different strategy. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a video on loans, um, uh, you know, the federal student loans, student loans, and then I'm going to also do a video when it comes to talking about uh, things that parents should consider um, while, uh, while they are planning to help their kid uh, go to college. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope it gave you some um, insight uh, that will help you navigate uh, your decision. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you can leave them down. Uh, in the comment section, I'll be more than happy to email, um, I mean, to answer them, or you can email your questions to me as well. Hope you all are having a great day, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you share um, the video and hit that notification button so you can know when I'm uploading again. All right, y'all take care. Bye-bye.